of blaring out with Eric Blair show tonight, interviewing rockers on the red carpet for the Ronnie James Dio Stand Up and Shout Cancer Fund's third annual Bowl for Ronnie event. Mark, God bless you, man. How you doing tonight? I'm all right, man. Thanks for having me on the show. No problem. What's important about supporting the Ronnie James Dio Stand Up and Shout Cancer Fund? I, I think most people are probably affected by cancer in one form or another. I can tell you from my personal experience that both of my uh, parents are cancer survivors. So it's, it's, it's a cause that's dear to my heart. I also was uh, an employee of Universal Music Group and they, uh, uh, they helped to found the City of Hope, which is uh, here in Southern California, which is on the cutting edge of a lot of cancer research and cancer uh, cures. And, uh, you know, Ronnie was a very important guy in my life. Uh, Wendy Dio was our manager in Cold Sweat. Uh, Ronnie produced some of the demos that got assigned to MCA. Uh, and both of my bands, both Keel and Cold Sweat, toured with Dio. So, uh, again, very, I feel very privileged to uh, have been able to know Ron, uh, known Ronnie. He's a wonderful human, and this is the least that I can do uh, to help support his legacy and the foundation that Wendy has started. They're actually going to take the hologram on tour. You heard about that, right? Yeah, well, I, personally, I'm all for it, because I, I think what it does, it, it just helps extend uh, his, his legacy uh, to some fans that maybe didn't get a chance to see him back in the day. And um, again, you know, the music that he created was so iconic. It deserves, it deserves another shot around the world, you know, and I'm all for it. Hey, you know what? 50 years from now, if somebody decides to do a keel hologram with me, I'd be flattered. So we'll see. But uh, I think it's a wonderful idea. And again, I, I see only benefit in it. Are you working with Ron Keel at all? Well, Keel is uh, on and on and off again. We we play pretty infrequently this day uh, these days, but we are actually on the Monsters of Rock cruise in 2018. She'll be sailing uh, from Miami in February. That'll be actually our fourth time on the cruise. So uh, we are looking forward to that. We're hoping that we can actually do a few more shows in 2018. Mark, you know the business has changed so much. How how have you embraced the, the cruises? Because the cruises are like a big way to keep heavy metal music and progressive rock alive and it's a for us it's a paid vacation and, and it's kind of like homecoming you get to see all your friends you know and don't forget i'm a fan of a lot of the bands that are on these cruises man i go and i see night ranger i see tesla i go see queens i'm on the side of the stage uh, cheering them on so for me you know even though i'm playing uh it's an opportunity for me to uh, see friends again and and to listen to great music music that, music that's been a part of my soul for years and years were you ever a Boston fan? Of course. I actually lived well, I, I moved to L.A. from Boston, but I was a fan of the band Boston. And Tom Schultz, actually one of the guitar players that really heavily influenced my playing. Uh, you know, I was the guy in Kiel that always liked to do the twin guitar solos. I was influenced by Thin Lizzy, uh, Judas Priest, but of course Boston, too. You listen to those records and those solos are soaring and they're dual harmony. They're melodic. You can sing along to them. They're graceful they're you know everything about him is just amazing so uh tom schultz uh, he, he gets a big thumbs up in my book yeah i mean reading just reading interviews with that guy about what's going on up here like technically it just uh, mind blowing he's, he's one of those rare guys that has the left brain and the right brain yeah. you know because uh, he was an engineer for polaroid yeah. and let's not forget he developed all those great things the the, the rock man yeah and the Schultz power soak and everything else. So, you know, in addition to be a great player and a great writer, you know, he was he engineered this stuff. You know, he recorded that first album in his in his basement. You know, it's an amazing, amazing accomplishment. You, you know? want to hear something mind blowing? So they interviewed Tom Schultz in his studio. I think the interview is about 20 years old. There's a there is like a stack that looks like a tower in his studio, and that, the interviewer says, "What is that tower?" And he goes. That is pieces of tape of the drum track for Don't Look Back because I didn't like the way the beat was going, so I chopped it up and put it back together. Uh, maybe that's a little, uh, maybe a little anal, but uh, you know, it worked for him, and who could say he was wrong, right? I mean, 20 million albums later, who could say he was wrong? So. Yeah, those Boston records. Now, the reason I brought up Boston is that the Boston guys were on a cruise. Barry Goodrow and Sid... And Sid died on the cruise. Yeah, yeah. and what do you think of him going out like that playing? Well, it's pretty ironic. You know, I know there's been some other guys that have done that. And all I can say is if I have to go, I hope I go out playing too. The Blaring Out Show.